अच्छा जी फेब मार्च में सेवेंटी का पेपर स्टार्ट करें क्वेश्चन नंबर वन छोड़ देंगे आप अटेम्प नहीं करेंगे क्यों क्योंकि लंबा क्वेश्चन लग रहा है फॉरन टू करेंगे मैंने कहा था ना एक पेज पे थ्री थ्री या फोर क्वेश्चन होते हैं ठीक है ना तुमने कहा सेकंड आसान लग रहा है थर्ड आसान लग रहा है उसके बाद तुमने कहा फोर्थ छोड़ दो फोर्थ लंबा है फिफ्थ आसान लग रहा है सिक्स भी छोड़ दिया आगे चले गए सेवन आसान लग रहा है एट आसान लग रहा है नाइन सिंपल है इक्वल एवरियम के सिंपल होते हैं आगे बढ़ गए तुमने टेन अटेम किया फिर इलेवन अटेम किया ट्वेल्व भी आसान लग रहा है फटाफट तुमने कहा थर्टीन बाद में देखेंगे फोर्टीन बाद में का मतलब ये नहीं है कि बाद में बाद में का मतलब है कि सबसे पहले प्रायोरिटी नंबर वन क्या होगी फटाफट ऑन द स्पॉट जो जिसको देखते ही आंसर समझ आता है पहले वो अटेम करेंगे so, ये क्वेश्चन सिक्सटीन छोटा है सिक्सटीन अटेम किया सेवनटीन छोड़ा नाइनटीन अटेम किया ट्वेंटी अटेम किया ट्वेंटी वन अटेम किया ट्वेंटी टू छोड़ा ट्वेंटी थ्री अटेम किया ट्वेंटी फाइव छोड़ा ट्वेंटी सिक्स छोड़ा ट्वेंटी सेवन छोड़ा ट्वेंटी एट अटेम किया ट्वेंटी नाइन आसान लग रहा है बिकॉज उस पर डी वैल्यू ट्वेंटी नाइन अटेम किया थर्टी छोड़ा ये पॉलिसी आपने पेपर में अपनानी है बिल्कुल आसपास इधर उधर कौन क्या कर रहा है बिल्कुल नहीं देखना फोकस रखना है पेपर के ऊपर फटाफट आप वापस गए ऊपर अब आप देखें कितने क्वेश्चन आपके आराम से दस से ऊपर क्वेश्चन अटैम्प हो चुके हैं इसका ठीक है ना ये पॉलिसी आपने रखनी ये नहीं कि पहले आप बैठ के पूरा पेपर चेक कर रहे हैं अच्छा कितने सवाल है अच्छा हाँ क्या बाकी मैं इस पेपर को अटैम्प कर सकता हूँ नहीं कर सकता कितने मुश्किल है किस लेवल तक के मुश्किल सवाल एग्जाम ने लिए ये टाइम नहीं है आपके पास एक घंटा है आपके पास एक घंटे में टेक्निक के साथ पेपर अटैम्प करना है समझ में आ गई बात क्लियर हो गई फिर आपने जो मिस किए हैं उसके बाद फिर आप आहिस्ता आहिस्ता उनको अटेंड करना शुरू करेंगे ठीक है जी अच्छा क्वेश्चन नंबर वन द डायग्राम इज फ्रॉम द चैप्टर ऑन इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम इकोनॉमिक इन एन इकोनॉमिक टेक्स्ट बुक इट शुड कंटेन टर्म अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट कैसिटी एंड चॉइस इन दी ऑर्डर इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम सो वॉट इज द करेक्ट ऑर्डर फॉर द टर्म्स टू अपेयर इन द डायग्राम सो ऑब्वियसली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नो दैट वी हैव स्केरसिटी so scarcity leads to choices to be made and that when we make a choice we have to make a trade off and that leads to opportunity cost so the answer should be c theek hai simple question question number 2 what is the most effective for the effective operation of the division of labor in a modern economy what is most effective for the what is the most effective um, for the effective operation of the division of labor in a modern economy so yeah the answer should be uh, should it be b c or d no it doesn't make sense um if you want if you want division of labor results into specialization specialization results into trade on the basis of um, you know you trade domestically as well and then you trade internationally on the basis of absolute and comparative advantage but for trade to take place whether domestically or internationally you have to have a medium of exchange so definitely without the supply of money it's it's useless you can't just end up producing goods without selling them right Question number three: The diagram shows the production possibility curve for an economy that is producing at point P. So, how many units of good X you are producing? You are producing X, and then you are producing these amount of units, right? What which quantity of X is given up to produce the quantity of Y shown? So, what is the amount of Y that you are producing? You are producing this much amount of Y, which obviously means that you must definitely. तुम A से P पे तो नहीं आए होगे, because A से P पे X तुम ज़्यादा बना रहे हो, Y for for go कर रहे हो. so basically if they are asking you if so it me definitely means that you must be at this point and now you move from point a to p so if you move from point a to p how many units of uh, y do you make you make you end up making 100 units of y so you ended up making 100 units of y and for that how many units of x have you forgone you have forgone 50 units of x right samajh mein aa gayi baat wo aap se keh rahe hain ki is tarah economy is at point p right now you are at point p and at point p you are making this much y and you are making 100x right so they are saying that if you are making this amount of x which should be 110 right if you are making 110y if you are making 110y then how much amount of x have you forgone to make 110y which means definitely you are moving up the curve so if you are moving up the curve then you how many x have you forgone you forgone 50x so 50 should be the answer right so now guys moving forward we see that question number 4 says remember the technique that i have taught you this is the technique that you will apply remember you have to wahan pe tumhe ye figure out karne ki zarurat nahi hai ki mere mujhe ye answer samajh mein aa raha hai nahi aa raha kyun nahi aa raha you know that is not the time to check your own self that's the time to perform so you have to perform with technique question number 4 says despite much opposition the local government in a popular tourist uh, built a leisure center and a swimming pool so, okay which is open to everyone so it's open to everyone theek hai Many tourists visit the center. Local residents are charged a lower entry fee than the fee charged to tourists. Okay, so the so the people who are visiting the swimming pool and the leisure center, 
जो लोकल्स हैं वहां के दे आर चार्ज लोअर एंट्री फीस एज कम्पेयर टू दूरस हाउ वर्ड इकोनॉमिक क्लासीफाई दिस सर्विस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स नॉट अट गुड इट इज इट अ मेरिट गुड इट्स नॉट अ मेरिट गुड एज वेल इज इट अ प्राइवेट गुड और अ पब्लिक गुड इट कान बी अ पब्लिक गुड बाय because you're charging a you're charging a fees right whether you're charging a lower fees to tourist or whether you're charging a lower fees to locals or you're charging a high fee to tourists you're still charging a fee if you're charging a fee that it means that the locals or the tourists can't enter the prem uh, can't enter the leisure center or swimming pool without paying a price for it so for anything that you pay a price for that is those goods are private goods and remember that when you pay a price for it it is easily you are easily able to exclude people who don't pay the price so that makes private goods excludable so those people who will not be able to pay the price for the leisure center or swimming pool won't be allowed to to enter right and also since and it's also ex- rivalrous as well there is rivalry why because obviously the more people enter the swimming pool right the more people enter the swimming pool then the swimming pool will definitely be crowded right so the less benefit will be available because if you're swimming and there are more and and there are so much the pool is crowded you won't be able to swim properly right so the benefit of the swimming pool will will start diminishing as more and more people enter the swimming pool so that is why it's a so you can say that it's rivalrous however in public goods they are non rivalrous which means that the benefit to the next person or to the other person will not diminish as you start consuming them but even even as far as the leisure center is concerned as more and people as more people get crowded in the leisure center then obviously the benefit for the others to follow in Well, you know, deteriorate or diminish because peop- it will be crowded and no one will be in- no one will be able to enjoy the benefit fully, right? So, question number five says on a demand supply diagram, the things remain the same. A fall in the price for commodity will normally shift. So, a fall in the price for commodity so will will shift the demand for a substitute. No, to the right. No, it should actually um, shift the demand to the left. The demand for the commodity to the right. no it would result in an extension of demand the supply for a jointly produced commodity to the left yes this should be the answer because for example let's say for instance let's say that if if the price of good a falls then the um if the price of good a falls and the supply quantity supplied of good a will fall as well right if the quantity supplied of good a falls and let's say that good b good a and good b are jointly are basically jointly supplied right they are jointly supplied they are jointly supplied right maybe it's a by product right so good b is a by product it's jointly supplied with good a so what is going to happen basically the supply of good b will also shift to the left the supply for a jointly produced commodity shifts to the left so basically c is the, c should be the right answer for this question number 6 says in 2014 an attempt to find new users for seven sites Okay, so, so whenever they are specifically giving you a number, remember that the supply will be fixed. It will it will be totally vertical, perfectly inelastic. Why? Because they are they are talking about seven sites only. So it's fixed in number. So whenever you have a quantity that is fixed, the supply becomes perfectly inelastic because they are giving you a fixed quantity. So even if prices rise, the you can't increase the number of sites, right? Whatever the demand is, you can't increase. So if the demand for these sites is increasing. so you can't increase the number of sites you can't bring it to eight sites that is why the supply is inelastic perfectly so pehle kya hota tha it was used to bury rubbish now the hong kong government announced it would allow private companies to come in and to bid to redevelop the sites which diagram shows the change in the market for these sites so first of all supply should be inelastic definitely the answer should be a or b because supply is perfectly inelastic but obviously since the government has allowing the private companies to come in and to redevelop these sites the demand for these the um the demand for these sites will definitely increase therefore the correct answer should be a for apple right because the private companies would come in they would take over these sites they would redevelop them maybe turn into a commercially viable um activity and do economic activity over there question number 7 says the price elasticity of demand for a firm's product is equal to 1 for all price changes which means it is unitary elastic so pd equals to 1 is unitary elastic you draw a rectangular hyperbola for that sorry you draw a rectangular hyperbola for that and total revenue and total expenditure always stays the same so the answer should be d the firm's revenue will always be the same whatever the price is right and if the ps is unitary elastic it is drawn from origin remember acha ek baat aap ye samajh le any upward sloping 
any upward sloping curve that is drawn from the origin has a elasticity equal to 1 remember that any upward sloping curve that will be drawn from the origin a 45 degree line it's usually a 45 degree line it is a 45 degree line by the way because it's since this is 90 degrees so if it passes through the origin like this it's obviously 45 degree angle is being formed right so any linear upward 45 degree line has an elasticity that is equal to 1 remember that right whether okay whether it's ps or maybe yd whatever it is so even like i saw a possible question so for instance let's say if this is income and this is quantity demanded for good a and you want to calculate if you if you want to cal so what will be the yd for the product the yd would be equal to 1 so for instance if incomes are rising the quantity demanded of good a is rising if incomes are rising the quantity demanded of good a is rising So the y d would equal to one. I saw a past paper question recently. So I'm telling you that whenever the line will pass through the origin, 45 degree angle will be formed. Any upward sloping linear line will have an elasticity that will be equal to one. Question number eight: Which change will lower the price last year supply for a product? If you want to lower, so lowering the elasticity means making it inelastic or less elastic. And when you say that the elasticity is high, it means more elastic, or you can also call it less inelastic. they mean the same thing right more or less the same thing you can say so output of the product near full capacity yes definitely the more you the more the firm reaches full capacity so obviously the resources are exhausted and the more inelastic the supply gets right question number 9 says the diagram shows the market for coffee the initial equilibrium position is x the price of tea a substitute falls so the price of t is tarah ke questions mein aapko kya karna hota hai you read the question first it's saying the price of t which is a substitute falls so i will say that the price of t mai apne paas likh lunga the price of this is how you solve these questions likh liya karo side mein the price of t falls so if the price of t is falling which is obviously a a, a substitute for coffee so what is going to happen to demand for coffee the demand for coffee will fall so the demand has to shift to d2 definitely ek cheez mujhe samajh mein aa gayi ठीक है, बिकॉज ये क्वांटिटी ऑफ कॉफी दी दी है प्राइस ऑफ कॉफी दी दी है सो कॉफी इज अ सब्सिट्यूट फॉर टी इफ द प्राइस ऑफ टी फॉल्स द डिमांड फॉर कॉफी विल फॉल बिकॉज पीपल विल स्विच टू टी एंड एन इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स इज इंपोज्ड ऑन कॉफी व्हेनेवर एन इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स इज इंपोज्ड ऑन कॉफी डेफिनेटली द सप्लाई विल शिफ्ट टू द लेस एंड कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन विल राइज सो डी2 शुड इंटरसेक्ट एस2 वेयर इज डी2 इंटरसेक्टिंग एस2 इट इज इंटरसेक्टिंग एट ए द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए करेक्ट मूविंग फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन नंबर 10 इट सेज The diagram shows the market for new houses. What would cause a change in the market equilibrium position from X to Y? Yeah. So, so basically, here what's happening is that the price is increasing, but the quantity is still the same. So, first of all, the demand has increased. So, what may cause may have caused an increase in demand and supply has actually fallen. So, a fall in income tax and rise in building cost. So, if income tax falls, the demand will actually yes go up. and a rise in building costs will bring the supply down so i think a should be the answer so the answer to question number 10 is a actually yeah because if income tax falls and purchasing power rises demand increases if building costs will rise supply will actually fall so isme ye ho raha hai so you identify what's happening you identify that demand is increasing and then you identify that supply is falling question number 11 jam and honey are substitutes honey and bees wax are in joint supply theek okay? hai Joint supply means that the if you produce A, then automatically B will be produced as well. So B and A will be produced together. Okay. So jam and honey are substitutes. Honey and bees wax are in joint supply. Other things being equal, what will be the result of an increase in price of jam? So if jam, so if the price of jam goes up, so for instance, if the price of jam goes up, so jam and honey are substitutes, right? So the quantity demanded for jam will go down. We know that, but the demand for honey would actually go up so the demand for honey will rise because honey and jam are substitute so the answer should either be c or it should be d so so if the demand for honey goes up what will happen to the price of honey the price of honey will go up because we know that whenever demand will rise the price will go up right so if the demand for honey goes up right if the demand for honey goes up the price of honey will actually go up as well so the price of honey will go up and what will happen to the price of bees wax ye bhi dekh lete hain so first of all if demand for honey is rising then there would be an extension 
in the quantity supplied for honey right more honey will be produced or not the quantity supplied of honey will rise as well aisa hai ki nahi the diagram is telling us since honey and beeswax are in joint supply so if honey is rising more beeswax will be produced as well so beeswax ki supply will rise so the supply of beeswax will rise if the supply of beeswax rises what will happen to the price of beeswax it will go down this is demand for beeswax this is supplies of beeswax so what is going to happen if supplies of beeswax rises supply of beeswax the price of beeswax should go down right so the answer should be c that the price of honey goes up and the price of beeswax goes down so again this was not a difficult question it was just a logical sort of a question you should know the relation between these two you know that what happens if the price of substitutes rises if the price of product a rises and product b is a substitute then the demand for product b has to you know sort of go up as well theek okay? hai and if something is in joint supply remember if it's in joint supply and let's say for instance if i say that this is demand for product a supply of product a if demand for product a will go up it means that more product a will be demanded so what will firms do firms would start producing more product a so there would be an extension in supply as well for product a right so the quantity being traded would rise a quantity quantity traded rise or is ka kya matlab what do you mean by quantity traded increasing it means that quantity demanded is rising as well and quantity supplied is rising as well now if if product a and product b are in joint supply and the quantity supplied of a will increase then what will happen to the supply of b remember because a and b are in joint supply the supply of product b would actually go up theek hai so how would you make the the graph for that you'd say this is demand for product b this is supply of product b the supply of product b would actually increase and that would result into a decline in the price of product b question number 12 for price to act as a rationing mechanism there are four functions of prices signaling function incentive function rationing function allocative function all of these functions have been taught to you in significant detail they are in written in your registers remember the rationing function ka function ka jo par, uh, aim hota hai that is to eliminate disequilibrium that is to eliminate uh, shortages and surpluses to ration out the shortage to ration out the surplus so what will be the answer for this question number 12 should be c to reduce the quantity demanded by some individual so obviously there must be a there must be um, an excess demand and excess demand must have resulted into a shortage and if the rationing function so basically if you want to eliminate the shortage the prices has to you know go up if the prices go up that actually rations out the shortage so whenever there is a shortage the prices go up and that actually brings down the the quantity demanded it brings down the quantity demanded and it brings up the quantity supplied right so quantity supply starts to rise quantity demand starts to fall and new equilibrium is formed hence the 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 shortage is actually rationed out question number 13 a well known clothes retailer decides to have a summer sale in its shop as a result the number of people who uses the shops increases original selling price okay so basically aapke paas selling price is suppose kare ye 100 rupees pe tha aapne 50% discount deke now the sale price is rupees 50 rupees 100 ka product is being sold at rupees 50 अगर आप रुपीज हंड्रेड पे थे तो ओरिजिनल लेट सपोज लेट्स सेट सेनिटलीरिजिनल फाइव यूनिट्स प्लस दिनल थ्री यूनिट्स राइट so obviously the original consumer surplus when five when five units were being sold this was the consumer surplus right and when a discount was given basically so what was the increase in consumer surplus this was the increase in consumer surplus so this is the increase in consumer surplus the question is saying which areas measure the change in consumer surplus for the customers the customers who would have bought the clothes anyway and the surplus for the new customers so for the customers who have bought the clothes anyway means they are talking about the old customers and the surplus for the new customers so they are talking about the surplus for the old customers so consumer surplus change ho raha hai right so consumer surplus change ho raha hai that is k plus l that is representing increase in consumer surplus 
Now this increase in consumer surplus is divided into the increase enjoyed by increase enjoyed by old consumers who were actually buying five units. Old consumers who used to buy five units before at a higher price. Who used to buy five units at a higher price plus the surplus enjoyed by those new customers. That is those three additional customers who are kind of enjoying the new price of the product. That is the lower price, right? So basically, you need to understand that if I if, let me raise this. So basically, let's say that you know five and then let's say eight. So let let's say the fifth unit was actually bought at initially it was bought at this price, and now the fifth unit is being bought at this price. So the vertical distance is actually representing the decline in price. So so all these units, for instance, the first unit, the second, the third, the fourth, these units were initially being bought at this price. Now they are bought at this price. Now the second unit was bought at initially was bought at this price. Now it bought this price. The fourth unit was initially bought at this price. Now it was bought at this price. So all the old customers who were actually buying those previous five units enjoy an increase in consumer surplus of area K. Does it make sense? They enjoy an increase in consumer surplus of area K. And the new customers who actually are buying those new product are actually you know buying that units are actually enjoying a surplus of of you know area l why are they enjoying a surplus of area l they enjoying a surplus of area l because you know maybe maybe the the, the sixth unit let's say sixth unit for them the sixth unit was actually worth you know this was the this was the marginal utility remember this was a marginal utility that is the willingness to pay Demand is the willingness to pay. So they were willing to pay a higher price, but they ended up paying a lower price. For the seventh unit as well, they ended they wanted to pay a higher price, but they ended up paying a lower price. And for the eighth unit, they, you know, they, they paid a price that was equal to the amount they were willing to pay. So L is the consumer surplus that is actually enjoyed by new customers. So the answer should be C. Okay, guys, now I'm going to be explaining to you this MCQ in some other way. For instance, let's say that you are buying um, let's say the initial. Let's say, let's take units, let's take the market price and let's pay, take the price you are willing to pay, willing to pay, right? So let's say for the first unit, you pay $10 and you are willing to pay $13. So what is your consumer surplus? It's how much? It's three. For the second unit, you pay a price of 10. You're willing to pay 12. The consumer surplus is two. For the third unit, you are willing to pay how much you're willing to pay, uh, you're willing to pay uh, 11 and you end up paying 10. So the consumer surplus is one. For the fourth unit, you're willing to pay 10, you pay 10. What is your consumer surplus? Zero. How many units do you buy? You buy four units and what is your total consumer surplus? That is $6. So your total consumer surplus is $6. If the price increases to P1, sorry, if the price decreases to P1, let's say, if the price falls, if the price falls to, let's say, $8, now, what is the consumer surplus? I'm calling it CS1. What is the new consumer surplus? The new consumer surplus would be 13 minus 8. How much are you now willing to pay for the for the first unit? Obviously, you are willing to pay the same $13. It's only that the price has fallen. So what is the new consumer surplus? 13 minus 8. What is that? So the, now this is the new price, right? So for the second unit, what is the consumer surplus? 4. For the third unit, the consumer surplus is uh, uh, 3. For the fourth unit, the consumer surplus is two. Now, since the price has fallen, you'll buy two more units. Let's say you'll buy the fifth unit, which is which is obviously costing you again eight dollars. And for that, you were willing to pay, let's say, nine dollars since ten and nine are going up. So now the consumer surplus would be one dollar, and then you will end up buying the sixth unit as well, which is in you eight dollars, and then you end up. And then how much are you willing to pay for the sixth unit? Now, what is your total consumer surplus? Five plus four plus three plus two plus one. Total consumer surplus is 15. What is your increase in consumer surplus? Nine. Nine is your increase in consumer surplus, right? Nine is basically, nine is basically your, you can say that's your increase in consumer surplus, right? So, so sorry, yeah. Um, so basically your consumer surplus is 15 right now your consumer surplus has actually increased to 15 from from 6 it now jumps to how much it jumps to let's say 15 now you need to understand that out of this 15 
some of the consumer surplus is enjoyed on the previous units and some of the consumer surplus is enjoyed on the new units so for instance all the previous units that you were buying for example uh you can say that you were initially buying four units right ek second you were buying four units so initially you were buying four units on those four units you were enjoying a consumer surplus of how much you were enjoying a consumer surplus of 6 now on those four units how much are you enjoying a consumer surplus of now you are enjoying a consumer surplus of 14 so basically on those previous units you were enjoying a consumer surplus of 6 now on those same units you are enjoying a consumer surplus of 14 right and on the new units basically you are enjoying a consumer surplus of dollar one so you need to understand that the consumer surplus is actually broken down into two phases right some of the surplus is being enjoyed on the previous units uh, and some of the surplus is actually being enjoyed on the new units or is question mein exactly yahi ho raha hai wo aap se keh rahe hain kaun sa surplus enjoy ho raha hai on the previous units that is k and the surplus enjoyed on the new units that is l this is what the question is actually asking you to do so if you if you ask me that what is the old consumer surplus i would say that the old consumer surplus is dollar 6 What is the new consumer surplus? I would say the old consumer surplus is dollar fifteen. If I ask you what is the increase in consumer surplus, you would say, sir, the increase in consumer surplus is fifteen um, minus six is how much? Nine. The increase in consumer surplus is nine. Now you tell me something. On the previous units, you were enjoying a consumer surplus of six dollars. On the previous four units, now you are enjoying a consumer surplus of four dollars. If you minus fourteen from six, what do you get? Eight. which means that 8 is the increase in consumer surplus that you enjoyed on the previous unit and 1 is the increase in consumer surplus that you gained on the new units this is the perfect mathematical explanation that i have shown from this step for this diagram and i am very proud of it for the existing customers you can say for the so isko agar main yun bolu main kahun these were four units and this is the six unit so this is the consumer surplus that has been enjoyed by the previous consumers and this would be equal to how much 8 dollars maybe ये जो एट डॉलर है एंड दिस इज द कंज्यूमर सरप्लस दैट इज वन डॉलर इंजॉयड बाय द टू एडिशनल यूनिट दैट बी कंज्यूम क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन से टू थाउजेंड एंड फोर्टीन सम सुपर the price they were willing to pay farmers for milk to below what was then the market equilibrium price यानी जो भी market equilibrium price थी supermarkets ने बोला कि भाई हम equilibrium पे नहीं बेचेंगे हम कम पे बेचेंगे yani they reduce the they were not selling at the market clearing price if you do not sell at a market clearing price it always results into a disequilibrium we have read that the equilibrium price is the clear market clearing price if you try to sell it at a price that is below the market equilibrium price it will always result into a disequilibrium it will result into a basically result into a shortage okay if you result if you sell it below at a mark if you sell below the market clearing price they pass the lower price of the why did they why were they trying to sell at a lower price because they wanted to pry, pass the lower price onto the consumers um in order to try and encourage them to store so that they could come into the store right because they wanted to increase the quantity demanded the government then fixed an effective minimum price government ne bola bhai ye kya chal raha hai to the government ne bola ke bhai hum to minimum price laga rahe hain ab so ab jab unhone minimum dekhiye ye equilibrium price hai ye price hai supermarkets ki aur uske baad ये वाली जो प्राइस है दिस प्राइस इज द मिनिमम प्राइस राइट सो दिस इज द मिनिमम प्राइस सो नाउ सुपर मार्केट है मिनिमम प्राइस टू द फार्मर्स सो दीज टू एक्शन आर शोन इन द डायग्राम सो बेसिकली वॉट हैपनिंग हेयर इज दैट इफ द सुपर मार्केट वर इनिशियली पेइंग द फार्मर्स द प्राइस दैट दे वॉन्टेड टू ओके सो आई थिंक आई आई मेड स्पॉन मिस्टेक इन द क्वेश्चन इट्स एज सम सुपर मार्केट रिड्यूज द प्राइस देर विलिंग टू पे टू द फार्मर्स सॉरी so they were they said to the farmers that we are not going to pay you the market clearing price we're going to buy you buy the milk from you at a much lower price so that we can we can actually sell the because if if they buy at a lower price they're going to sell it to the consumer at a lower price so those large supermarkets were actually paying farmers lower prices and that resulted into lower revenues for farmers so the government steps in government intervenes and they impose a minimum price right so supermarkets were paying a price to the farmers at this amount and now they the government steps in and says no the supermarket has to pay a minimum price now right so initially if the supermarket was paying to the farmers a lower price that resulted into uh basically a what a shortage of let's say 17 minus 4 would be how much 13 13000 liters ki it would it resulted into a shortage 
so after the supermarkets action that is the supermarket said that we're going to end up we're going to pay you a lower price so that resulted into a shortage of 13000 so the answer should be either c or d but after the minimum price what happens is that after the minimum price is imposed that increases the the quantity demanded to 6000 and it reduces the quantity supplied to 13000 so sorry my bad it 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 reduces it increases the quantity demanded to 6000 so it increases the sorry it increases the it increases the quantity demanded to 6000 that's the quantity now demanded and it increases the quantity supplied to 13000 that is the quantity supplied so basically it resulted into a surplus of 13 minus 6 so dono cases mein disequilibrium hi aa raha hai but then again at least the minimum price is supporting the farmers because the supermarkets were actually buying from them at a lower price so it resulted into a surplus of how much it resulted into a surplus of 7000 liters so the answer should be d right the correct answer should be 14 should be d 13 was c 14 is d let's move on to 15 this is a very good question question keh raha tha initial market for a product is represented by demand and supply d1 s1 so ye aapki market so basically i'm going to be doing is that main numbers dal deta hu yahan pe aapke aasani ke liye let's call it 100 dollars ज़्यादा बड़े फिगर नहीं लेते ना छोटे ले लेते हैं तो क्या शौक है इसका हंड्रेड का ट्वेंटी डॉलर ये हो जाते हैं वट इज द न्यू इक्वेलिब्रियम प्राइस द न्यू इक्वेलिब्रियम प्राइस आफ्टर द सब्सिडी पोस्ट सब्सिडी द प्राइस इज हाउ मच द प्राइस इज लेट्स से टेन डॉलर नाउ सिंस यू नो दैट सब्सिडी इज द इज बेसिकली द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू थर्लाई कर्व्स सो द अमाउंट ऑफ द सब्सिडी शुड एक्चुअली बी हाउ मच द सब्सिडी शुड बी You and we have already studied this in, lo- in a lot of detail. So let's yeah, obviously more than twenty yoga. So this amount would be let's say somewhere around twenty four. So if you want to calculate the subsidy per unit, that should be twenty four minus ten. Since this is the vertical distance, should be twenty four minus ten. That should come up to how much? Fourteen. So fourteen is basically the subsidy per unit. Now out of that, out of that, four. So basically, we know that the supply curve is the marginal cost curve, and the marginal cost is falling to from MC one, it's falling to MC two. So that reduces the margin. So basically, what is happening is that for each unit, for each unit, the government says that government is giving fourteen dollars to the firm. The gov for each unit produced, for each unit produced, the government is saying that we are giving fourteen dollars for every unit produced. So, if the government is paying fourteen dollars to the firm for every unit produced, so how much, how much, the firm transfers this benefit of subsidy to the consumer, right? So that, so the difference, just amount of price fall will be the fall in price. So let's say that the initial price was twenty, and the new price is. 10 right the initial price was 20 and the new price is 10 right so this vertical distance pn this vertical distance is equal to this vertical distance right just a second ye thoda sa just a second so ye basically aise hai right so this vertical distance is basically this vertical distance is 20 minus 10 that is How much? That is ten dollars. So if this is ten dollars, then this should also be ten dollars as well, right? So ten dollars is representing that fourteen dollars. Who is getting it? Firm is getting it. Is fourteen dollars' ka benefit firm pura ka pura transfer not doing on the consumer? Out of fourteen dollars' benefit, how much benefit is transferred to the consumer? Only ten dollars in the form $10. of reduction in price, and the remaining four dollars is actually kept in the pockets of the firm. राइट सो अभी और ये रिमेनिंग फोर डॉलर कहां से आ जाएगा मरियम ये बेसिकली ये अमाउंट होगा दैट इज दीज फोर डॉलर दैट इज ट्वेंटी फोर माइनस टेन सॉरी ट्वेंटी फोर माइनस ट्वेंटी दैट इज फोर डॉलर मेक सेंस अब वो तुमसे क्या पूछ रहा है वो तुमसे कह रहा है वॉट इज द इंसिडेंस ऑफ द सब्सिडी अब इंसिडेंस ऑफ द इंसिडेंस ऑफ टैक्स होता है तो ये बेसिकली एक तरह से घुमाया है आपको इट्स बेसिकली द बेनिफिट ऑफ द सब्सिडी सो द बेनिफिट ऑफ द सब्सिडी फॉर द कंज्यूमर इज हाउ मच द बेनिफिट ऑफ द सब्सिडी फॉर द कंज्यूमर शुड बी आर क्यू राइट सो इट शुड बी क्यू आर अब डायरेक्ट आप यही ऑप्शन करते हैं क्योंकि क्यू आर कहीं और दिया हुआ ही नहीं है प्रोड्यूसर में जाने की जरूरत ही नहीं है आपको मैं बता रहा हूं आपको तुम्हारे लिए समझाने के लिए मैं बता रहा हूं अगर तुम एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में बैठे हुए हो तुम अगर हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर हो 
कि क्यू आर ही कंज्यूमर का बेनिफिट है तो फिर प्रोड्यूसर का बेनिफिट कैलकुलेट करने की जरूरत है ही नहीं क्योंकि आंसर ऑप्शन में क्यू आर कहीं और दिया हुआ ही नहीं है तो यही आंसर हुआ ना फिर नहीं मुझे तो प्रोड्यूसर का बेनिफिट भी निकालने का शौक है तो निकालना एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में बैठ के कंफ्यूज हो जाओगे और टेक्निक कर हमें इस्तेमाल करनी है कल पेपर के अंदर सही है एग्जामिनर ने आपके लिए आसानी पैदा कर दी उसने आपको दूसरा क्यू दिया ही नहीं अगर वो आपको क्यू आर देता ना एक और ऑप्शन में फिर आप प्रोड्यूसर का बेनिफिट भले निकाल लेते हैं लेकिन प्रोड्यूसर का बेनिफिट क्या होगा इट शुड बी इक्वल टू टी आर दैट इज दिस दिस डिस्टेंस दैट इज टी आर राइट इट वॉज अ गुड क्वेश्चन वट इज द मोस्ट लाइकली पर्पज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट मेकिंग ट्रांसफर पेमेंट एज सोशल सिक्योरिटी बेनिफिट टू अनएम्प्लॉइड वर्क यू ऑल नो वट ट्रांसफर पेमेंट आर दीज आर दो पेमेंट दट आर ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम द गवर्मेंट टू अदर पीपल सच एज द पुअर पीपल और अनएम्प्लॉयड पीपल और सोशली और पीपल हु आर एक्सट्रीमली पुअर in for social welfare benefits against which no goods and services are sold so the why does the government does that so that it can reduce poverty most importantly it can reduce relative poverty or they can result into a more equal income distribution to encourage a change in income distribution should be the answer 16 should be here to encourage a change in the income distribution to make it more equal for equal distribution of income so the gap between the rich and the poor falls the rest of the mcqs are wrong the the answer options are wrong 17 is a good question says uh, i think this is a question that has been answered if, like it has come before as well in the diagram the demand for uh, agricultural commodity ns is the initial supply of the government promises to maintain farmers income at least at this initial level the initial level matlab pehle farmer ki income kya hai income is what total revenue or sales or say so that's price times quantity the price is 5 dollars the quantity is 1 so obviously What is the revenue? The revenue is five thousand, five thousand since it's one thousand tons, right? So this yeah, revenue meant this yeah, revenue is farmer ka pehle saal ya jab uski supply s hoti hai. Agle saal supply bad jati hai, to revenue kitna ho jata hai? Revenue ho jata hai four multiplied by two thousand. That is, let's say year two me. This is year one. Year two me the revenue go gets to eight thousand. So kya government ko maintain karne ki zarurat hai? Nahi hai. Year three me the revenue gets how much? Three times three. That is nine thousand. ईयर थ्री में गवर्नमेंट को स्टेप इन करने की जरूरत है नहीं बिकॉज रेवेन्यू तो ज्यादा हो रहा है ईयर फोर में हाउ मच इज द रेवेन्यू इन ईयर फोर द रेवेन्यू इज टू मल्टीप्लाई बाई फोर दैट इज एट थाउजेंड अगेन इट्स मोर देन फाइव थाउजेंड सो द गवर्नमेंट हैज नथिंग टू डू इन ईयर फाइव द रेवेन्यू इज हाउ मच द रेवेन्यू इज फाइव थाउजेंड दैट इज वन मल्टीप्लाई बाई फाइव फाइव थाउजेंड सो इन ईयर वन गवर्नमेंट सेट कि हम आपका फाइव थाउजेंड रेवेन्यू मेंटेन करवाएंगे अगर फाइव थाउजेंड से कम होगा अगर कम हो ही नहीं रहा ज्यादा हो रहा है तो फिर क्या गवर्नमेंट इंटरवीन करेगी और अगर 5000 भी हो रहा है तब भी इंटरवीन नहीं करेगी तो so, उसका आंसर होगा जीरो हाउ मच इन टोटल विल द गवर्नमेंट नीड टू पे टू सपोर्ट फार्मर्स ओवर द फोर सब्सिक्वेंट इयर्स सच अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन सच अ लॉजिकल क्वेश्चन लेकिन बच्चा सोचेगा नहीं 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 कुछ तो होगा बिकॉज आपने उस तरह के सब्सिडीज वाले क्वेश्चन किए ना जिसके अंदर लिखा हुआ होता है बाई हाउ मच विल डिमांड इंक्रीज वो अक्सर बच्चे उसको उससे कंफ्यूज कर रहे होते हैं Question number eighteen says which circumstances is not likely to represent a strong case for industry to be nationalized? So nationalization का मतलब होता है private private industry को private sector को government के हाथों में यानी state के हाथ में sell कर देना. So which circumstances is not likely to represent a strong case for यानी ऐसा क्या circumstances होंगे जिसके अंदर हम बोलेंगे कि industry को nationalize नहीं करो. Option A कहता है in the private sector the industry would significant would cause significant inequalities. So obviously फिर तो हमें नेशनलाइज कर देना चाहिए अगर इतनी इनक्वालिटीज आ रही है गवर्नमेंट विल इंश्योर दैट यू नो इन इक्वालिटी ना हो इफ द इंडस्ट्री इज नेशनलाइज सो सॉरी सो दिस शुड बी द आंसर ऑप्शन बी से इंडस्ट्री वुड अलाउ फॉर्म्स टू अलाउ ओके सो ये हमें लग रहा है ठीक है इसको छोड़ देते हैं सी देखते हैं इंडस्ट्री वुड बी अनप्रॉफिटेबल एज अ प्राइवेट एंटरप्राइज बट जनरेट लार्ज बेनिफिट फॉर द रेस ऑफ सो अगर इंडस्ट्री जो है वो एज अ प्राइवेट सेक्टर अनप्रॉफिटेबल है और लेकिन अगर वो लार्ज बेनिफिट जनरेट करिए रेस ऑफ सोसाइटी के लिए तो तो फिर प्राइवेट सेक्टर के हाथ में नहीं देना चाहिए इसका मतलब है कि इस इंडस्ट्री के बहुत सारे एक्सटर्नल बेनिफिट्स हैं और अगर जिस चीज के एक्सटर्नल बेनिफिट्स होते हैं प्राइवेट सेक्टर उसको हमेशा अंडर प्रोवाइड करता है इसलिए इस इंडस्ट्री को गवर्नमेंट के हाथों में नेशनलाइज कर देना चाहिए तो ये तो फेवर में जा रही है बात ये भी नहीं होगा द इंडस्ट्री वुड एक्सपीरियंस सच इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल दैट इट कैन सपोर्ट ओनली वन फर्म द इंडस्ट्री वुड एक्सपीरियंस सच इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल दैट इट कैन ओनली सपोर्ट वन फर्म इसका मतलब है कि इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल हमारे पास उतनी ही हो रही होंगी कि यार अगर अगर हमने इसको लेट से यू नो सो बेसिकली व्हाट्स व्हाट दिस एमसीक्यू मींस इज दैट इस इंडस्ट्री के अंदर इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल इतनी ही एक्सटेंड तक होंगी कि एक ही फर्म जो है वो इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल का फायदा उठा सके सो इफ 
it's if it's given in the hands of the private sector then obviously private sector mein there's easy entry and exit so more firms will enter if more firms will enter then the industry will not be able to sustain the economies of scale it is experiencing and if it is not able to sustain the economies of scale that it is experiencing the average cost of the industry would start rising and it would ultimately result into diseconomies of scale and that is not what we want to happen so so as far as this mcq is concerned this answer option is concerned it's better to for the industry to be nationalized usko private sector ke hath mein aap na chhodo nationalize hi kar dete ha answer option b dekhte hain the industry would allow firms outside of the industry to enter the easy the industry would allow firms outside of the industry to enter easily agar industry chahti hi yahi hai ki bahar wali firms bhi enter ho easily to phir hum zyada jo industries nationalize hoti hain wahan pe competition viable option nahi hota private sector mein privatize private sector ke andar competition makes sense as far as national if the industry is nationalized then makes sense for competition the competition is not viable over there so its answer option b hai question 19 says how does a rise in the price of factors of production affect the aggregate supply curve yeah price of factor of production care that is the price of resources so the price of factor of production or resources starts to rise it means the factor of production become expensive you have to pay more rent more wages more interest right so if that becomes more expensive it will increase the cost of production and that will cause the aggregate supply to shift to the left so the answer should be c19 that is it would shift the aggregate supply to the left question number 20 says in the diagram aggregate demand is an initial it's an initial ad, AD curve what would cause the aggregate demand to shift to ad2 so ad is rising right ad jo hai ho raha hai wo rise ho raha hai इसका मतलब सी बढ़ रहा होगा आई बढ़ रहा होगा जी बढ़ रहा होगा यानी एक्सपोर्ट्स बढ़ रहे होंगे यही रीजन हो सकता है अब देख लेते हैं अ डिक्रीज इन रियल वेजेस वेज रियल वेजेस डिक्रीज होंगे तो कंज्यूमर एक्सपेंडिचर वुड फॉल एडी बढ़ेगा नहीं गिरेगा एन एप्रीसिएशन ऑफ द करेंसी एन एप्रीसिएशन ऑफ द करेंसी वुड रिजल्ट इन टू अ फॉल इन नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स बिकॉज एप्रीसिएशन से एक्सपोर्ट्स वुड बिकम एक्सपेंसिव एंड इम्पोर्ट्स वुड बिकम चीपर सो नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स विल फॉल अज्यूम इन दी डी फॉर एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड एम्पोर्ट्स एज इलास्टिक Part C: Increase in money supply. Increase in money supply would result into an expansionary influence on AD, hence AD would shift to the right. By the way, contractionary and deflationary means the same thing. Inflationary and expansionary means the same thing. Question number twenty-one says relative weights are used in calculating the index of retail prices to reflect the different to reflect that to reflect a different amount of goods. different types of goods so relative weights are used in calculating the index of retail prices to reflect the different what is the question is saying to reflect the different he asked it should be a to reflect the different amount of money that is spent by consumers on each good remember when we are calculating the cpi we basically use weights and we assign weights to different goods and we assign weights to different goods it basically means we are giving weightage so if you take a basket of goods and you take let's say you take food you take leisure you take entertainment in an average person's basket of goods and you say that an average person consumes 20% of his expenditure goes on food 10% on this 5% on this and maybe necessities agar hum le lete hain to maybe you know um 65% on necessities so basically these are basically assigning weights they're assigning weightage to the amount of expenditure that is being spent on food leisure entertainment necessities that is why the correct answer should be a that is it reflects the amount of money that is spent by consumers on each good 22 says the table contains some figures from the balance of payment of the us what cannot be concluded cannot to focus karna cannot ke andar tumhe jo answer options honge na teen answer options honge that can be concluded tumhe ek nikalna hoga that cannot be concluded theek hai na to instead of is tarah ke answers ki technique ye hai ki what can be concluded bhi nikal sakte ho what cannot to khud hi eliminate ho jata hai so what can be concluded what can be concluded um what cannot be concluded about the us in 2014 from the table so let's say what can be concluded can he say that the exported services were valued at over 47 428 us dollars can we say that so what is the balance of trade and services the balance of trade and services was um 233 uh 233 138 and it, it it's positive so you have a positive balance of trade and services of 233 1 233 you have a positive balance of trade in services of 233 138 and so which means that the export of services that the ex, so so tumhare imports kitne hai tumhare imports hai 477 428 so iska kya matlab hai iska matlab hai that the export of services must have exceeded the import of services right 
सो द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस आर फोर सेवेंटी सेवन फोर टू एट सो डेफिनेटली तुम्हारे जो एक्सपोर्ट्स होंगे वो इस अमाउंट से ज्यादा ही होंगे तभी तुम्हारे पास बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड ऑन सर्विस पॉजिटिव में आ रहा है इसका मतलब है कि ये चीज कंक्लूड की जा सकती है और ये चीज जो यहाँ लिखी गई है ये बिल्कुल सही लिखी गई है तो पहले तो हम निकाल लेते हैं कंक्लूड क्या किया जा सकता है इंपोर्टेड गुड्स वर वैल्यूड एट हो अगेन मैं कह रहा हूँ थोड़ा टाइम कंज्यूमिंग होते हैं वट कैन बी कंक्लूडेड एंड के लिए रखना इसको ठीक है इंपोर्टेड गुड्स वर वैल्यूड एट ओवर एट ओवर सिक्सटीन थर्टी टू सिक्सटी नाइन बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड इन गुड्स नेगेटिव में आ रहा है सो so, इसका मतलब है कि इम्पोर्ट्स जो होंगी वो तुम्हारी एक्सपोर्ट से ज्यादा होंगी तभी बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड नेगेटिव में आ रहा है तुम्हारी एक्सपोर्ट्स हैं वन सिक्स थ्री टू सिक्स थ्री नाइन तुम्हारी इम्पोर्ट्स जो होंगी डेफिनेटली इस अमाउंट से ज्यादा होंगी तभी हमारा बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड इन गुड्स नेगेटिव में चल रहा है इसका मतलब ये भी सही स्टेटमेंट है ए एंड बी करेक्ट है ये कंक्लूड किया जा सकता है सी कह रहा है द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस वॉज लेस इन द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड गुड्स वट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस निकाल लो कैलकुलेट मी गिव मी द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस अगर तुम इसका डिफरेंस ले लोगे तो एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस सॉरी डिफरेंस नहीं इफ यू एड दम अप यू विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड सर्विस सो वट इज दोर्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड सर्विस इफ यू एड दम अप यू गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड सर्विस एंड इफ यू टेक द डिफरेंस इफ यू इफ सॉरी इफ यू बेसिकली Okay, so the value of exported services was less than the value of exported goods. So, can anyone please calculate me the value of exported services? The balance of trade and services is how much? It's two thirty three, one thirty eight. The imports of services is four seventy seven, four twenty eight. Can you calculate me the value of export and services? Yeah, right. Seven one zero five double six is the value of export and services. So the value of export of services was less than the value of exported goods. The value of exported goods, how much? Uh, the value of export in goods is sixteen three two six three nine. So this statement is correct because the value of export in services is how much? It's seven one zero five six six, and the value of exported goods is sixteen thirty two sixty nine, which is obviously less than the value of exported goods, right? So, so answer option, bacha, आपके पास D. अब ये सही क्यों है? We don't really care because D ही बच रहा है. लेकिन for your learning perspective, I'm telling you why is this correct? Why? Because In the current account, we measure balance of trade. We include balance the transactions of balance of services. Then you have net investment, right? Or you can say, and then you have net current transfers, right? Net investment income, or it's also known as net factor income. So if your balance of trade is in a positive two thirty eight three one three eight, and balance of trade in, uh, sorry. If your balance of trade and services is positive two thirty three one three eight, and the balance of trade and goods is is um, is negative seven forty one four six four six two, so you can't really say that whether the overall current account deficit was high or not because you don't really know the information given from the table. So, because you have told us the table. अब ये कोई आर्ग्यू करे मुझसे कि नहीं सर करंट अकाउंट में मेन ट्रांजैक्शंस तो बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड एंड बैलेंस ऑफ सर्विसेज दिखाता है दैट दैट्स राइट यू फाइन बट देन सवाल पूछ रहा है व्हाट कैन बी कंक्लूडेड फ्रॉम द टेबल सो द टेबल इज नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग एनी इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम रिगार्डिंग दैट इन्वेस्ट फैक्टर इनकम एंड नेट करंट ट्रांसफर सो यू रियली कांट से अबाउट ऑप्शन डी सो द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस वुड बी ऑप्शन डी व्हाट कैन नॉट बी कंक्लूडेड यू कांट रियली कंक्लूड फ्रॉम द टेबल दैट वेदर द करंट अकाउंट वाज इन अ डेफिसिट और नॉट सो डी इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी थ्री अ कंट्री ऑफ द फिक्स एक्सचेंज रेट जिनके फिक्स एक्सचेंज रेट होते हैं उसमें करेंसी जो होती है वो गवर्नमेंट मेंटेन करती है उसको फिक्स जिस रेट पे फिक्स किया होता है उसमें मेंटेन करती है ना ऊपर होने देती है ना नीचे होने देती है थ्रू यूजिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट्स एंड इट्स फॉरन करेंसी रिजर्व वॉट इज लाइकली टू रिजल्ट इन टू अटोरिएशन एंड इट्स बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट सो वॉट विल रिजल्ट इन डिटोरिएशन ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट या सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ डिक्रीज इन इंटरेस्ट रेट इन फॉरन कंट्रीज नो If if there's a decrease in the rate of foreign in the rate in foreign countries, so people will actually um, start investing in your country by so so that would result into an appreciation. Sorry, if your country ke interest rates gir jaate hain, so interest rates girne ki wajah se aapke kar aapki demand for the currency gir jati hai. Demand for currency gir jati hai, and aapke because why? Because agar aapke country ke interest rates gir jayenge, to people will not invest in your country right so they will not be preferring to invest in your country so the demand for currency will fall also those people who have already invested they will withdraw their money and they will invest abroad so your supply of currency will increase right 
supply of currency will go up so the so the currency will actually depreciate the cost of borrowing will fall the cost of borrowing will fall consumer will borrow more loans so if consumers will start borrowing more loans and firms will start borrowing more loans import more so firms will import more machinery consumers will import more luxuries right and that would result into a deterioration in the balance of payment and increase in the income of foreign countries will actually increase our exports demand for exports because if they if they get richer they would buy more from us a decrease in countries and that would actually improve the balance of payment right a decrease in the country's national income if the national income of the country is decreasing so people will not have the money to actually spend on domestic goods imports so dur ki baat hai so they won't import right so balance of payment deteriorate nahi hoga is situation mein a decrease in the interest rates in foreign countries it has nothing to do with the balance of payment deterioration or with that we are talking about over here question number 24 says at present one unit of a country's currency exchanges for 1.2 dollars so let's say 1 pound equals to let's say 1.2 dollars question 24 says um the country aims to set its exchange rate equal to 1 dollar so obviously agar agar exchange rate agar 1 pound se aap 1 dollar pe lekar aa rahe ho iska matlab aap currency jo hai wo depreciate ya devalue kar rahe hain so which combination of government actions in foreign exchange market must achieve this so if you are depreciating the pound you can do this by reducing the demand for pounds or you can do this by increasing the supply of pounds right so how will you increase the supply of pounds will increase the supply of pounds by buying dollars which means buying us currency and selling its own currency so you sell your own currency if you sell your own currency you supply your currency and you buy pound you buy dollars instead so b should be the answer 24 ha question 25 says the table gives the terms of trade index in 2010 and 2013 for japan and venezuela terms of trade venezuela mein ye 215.9 se 254.6 ho gaye which means that the terms of trade for venezuela have for venezuela have improved and the terms of trade for japan have deteriorated right they've gone down right which combination of statements is a correct interpretation of the changes between 2010 and 2013 to pehle to changes aap identify kar le terms of trade improve ho gaye venezuela ke japan ke deteriorate ho gaye acha okay so pehli cheez to ye hai okay so just go through the question it says uh, can buy more imports per unit of export so pehli baat to ye hai ki jab aapke terms of trade so by the way terms of trade is an index is is the index of export prices average export prices over index of average import prices right yahi tha so agar aapke terms of trade improve ho rahe hain which obviously means that you know your export prices are going up so basically iska matlab hai ke uh, so agar hum isko in terms mein dekhein so let's say the first column is saying can buy more imports per unit of exports you can buy more imports per unit of exports so if if your terms of trade are improving right if the, so so agar aap venezuela ke terms of trade dekhein wo improve ho raha hai right so this country ke terms of trade improve ho rahe honge iska matlab kya hota hai iska matlab ye hota hai ke your exports can buy you more imports that if your terms of trade are improving it actually means that your exports can buy you more imports I would definitely ask you to revise TOT, current account, and all of that, and also exchange rate. Otherwise, thoda problem ho jayega kal ke paper mein, theek hai? So terms of, ye sab humne kiya hua hai. Class recorded lectures majood hain, uske inde, uspe hamare Google Classroom pe. So agar terms of trade improve ho rahe hote hain, iska kya matlab hota hai? Iska matlab hota hai ki your exports can buy you more imports. So, so basically, agar hum Venezuela ka dekhein, to Venezuela ke hamare jo terms of trade hain, wo improve ho rahe hain. Which means that the Venezuela's the exports are they can buy us now more imports, okay? Uh, but if you look at this, it says import prices have risen faster than so answer. Yeah, to C or D. It says import prices have risen faster than export prices. If import prices, if the price of imports, if the average price of imports is rising faster than export prices, the terms of trade is case where our deteriorate will be, right? So for example, let's say. अगर हमारी एक्सपोर्ट प्राइसेस राइज हो रही है बट हमारी जो इंपोर्ट प्राइसेस हैं, दे आर राइजिंग फास्टर देन द राइज इन एक्सपोर्ट प्राइसेस। सो द टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड विल एक्चुअली गो डाउन दे विल डिटोरियट बिकॉज द इंपोर्ट प्राइसेस विल बी राइजिंग फास्टर देन आवर एक्सपोर्ट प्राइसेस। सो इफ द इम्पोर्ट प्राइसेज आर राइजिंग फास्टर देन एक्सपोर्ट प्राइसेज टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड विल डिटोरियट सो कौन से कंट्री के डिटोरिएट हो रहे हैं जापान के डिटोरिएट हो रहे हैं 
सो ये वेनेजुला वेनेजुला दोनों है ही नहीं द करेक्ट आंसर शुड बी सी द यू एस प्रेजिडेंट साइन अ ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट विच अलाउड मोर ड्यूटी फ्री एक्सेस यानी अब हम अगर यूएस ने बोला अगर हम मंगाएंगे लैटिन अमेरिक, अमेरिका से कैरेबियन कंट्रीज से तो हम उन 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 कंट्रीज से जब हम इंपोर्ट करेंगे तो उन पर ड्यूटीज नहीं लगाएंगे अब जब ड्यूटीज नहीं लगाएंगे जैसे पाकिस्तान गाड़ियां इंपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो ड्यूटीज लगा रहे हैं ना उस पर हैवी जिसकी वजह से गाड़ियों की प्राइसेस बढ़ जाती है सो प्राइस ऑफ इम्पोर्ट विल एक्चुअली गो डाउन ड्यूटी फ्री हो जाएगा तो सो so, so इसके क्या होगा द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ इम्पोर्ट विल गो अप सो हु विल इट बेनिफिट इट विल बेनिफिट दीज कंट्रीज लैटिन अमेरिकन कैरेबियन कंट्रीज दैट इज वाई दंसर शुड बी हु विल बेनिफिट who will benefit it will be beef sorry latin american businesses because they may be able to sell more in the us a is nahi hoga because it says caribbean pe hala ki caribbean countries ko bhi benefit hoga but us tarah hoga jab wo export kar rahe honge to us idhar likha hua hai to latin american is liye galat hai ye so b is the correct answer because now they will be able to sell more in the us so obviously we know that since the quantity of imports is rising the overall the overall import expenditure for the us will go up usa will go up and the export revenue for um latin american latin countries would actually go up theek okay? hai for them it's an export for us for us it's an import 27 says which statement is not a valid reason why a country may impose protectionist measures so koi aisa statement hoga jiske andar hame lagta hoga ki iski wajah se protectionist measures you know this statement does not really justifies uh, the country being imposing a protectionist measure so the answer to this would be It it shouldn't shouldn't be be A, yeah, it shouldn't be B as well, because if the country wants to retain control of an industry which is of strategic importance, especially it's a key industry or strategically important industry, then yes, definitely protecting it is very important from foreign companies or dumping. So that is why C should be the answer to give consumers a wider choice. If you want to give consumers a wide variety of choices, then you shouldn't be imposing protectionist measures because that would restrict choice, such as tariffs and quotas. Question twenty-eight says. A government wants to operate tight. अब तो बोलें कितना आसान सवाल है. What would it increase? Tighter monetary policy में money supply को कम करना चाहिए. तो क्या increase करेंगे? Interest rate increase करेंगे ना? Interest rate increase करेंगे. So cost of borrowing बढ़ेगी. Consumer expenditure investments भी गिर जाएंगी. AD will fall. You really you impose a tighter monetary policy because tighter monetary policy is a contractionary or Mariam a deflationary. Both mean the same thing. Demand side policy. <sighs> Question number twenty nine says. A country has a. This is a very good paper to solve. It covers a lot of concepts and areas. Her chapter cover कर दिया है. Question twenty nine says a country has a large current account deficit. If the government decides to devalue the currency, in which circumstances would such a measure reduce the deficit? So remember, we studied that a devaluation according to the Marshall Learner condition would be effective when the P D for imports plus the P D for exports is equal to sorry is greater than one. My bad, not equal to one. It's actually greater than one. So just calculate कर लो कहाँ पे greater than one आ रहा है. The sum of the PD and the sum of the PD for imports and exports should be greater than one. So the answer should be David. Twenty nine should be D because zero point five plus one is one point five. Since it's greater than one, then yes, the Marshall Learner condition would work if situation D is present. Remember that devaluation would actually initially it would worsen the deficit before it improves. And कभी कभी MCQs के अंदर वो रीवैल्यूएशन भी दे देते हैं उसके अंदर इट इट्स इट गोज लाइक दिस द जे कर्व इज ड्रॉन उल्टा इट सेज दैट इफ द कंट्री रीवैल्यूज द करेंसी रीवैल्यूएशन का मतलब होता है अपवर्ड वैल्यूएशन अगर करेंसी को अपवर्ड वैल्यू कर देंगे सही है ऑल दो मार्शल लोन कंडीशन इज मोर स्पेसिफिक टू द जे द डीवैल्यूएशन बट अगेन आई डोंट नो इन सम एम सी यूज द डू गिव दैट कंडीशन बट अगेन द मेन लॉजिक इज द सेम दैट Again, the PD for imports plus the PD for exports should be greater than one. And if that is the case, if it's not the case, because in the short run, initially it's not greater than one; it's less than one. Since the sum of PD for imports and exports is less than one, and if it's less than one, then if the country revalues the currency, it upward values the currency, the surplus would rise. Since this is a positive and this is negative current account balance, so the surplus rises before it actually enters into a deficit. So, इसमें जे कर्व उल्टा बन जाता है ठीक है समझ में आ गई बात ये ये रिवैल्यूएशन में एप्लीकेबल है दिस इज मोर एप्लीकेबल टू डीवैल्यूएशन बिकॉज द लॉजिक इज द सेम इन द शॉर्ट रन द सम ऑफ इलास्टिसिटीज फॉर पीडी फॉर इंपोर्ट्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स इज लेस देन 1 दैट्स इट क्वेश्चन नंबर 30 इट सेज द डायग्राम शोस फोर पॉसिबल एग्रीगेट सप्लाई कर्व्स एग्रीगेट सप्लाई कर्व्स हमारे पास डीएम है ओके सो बेसिकली दिस इज वन एग्रीगेट सप्लाई कर्व लुक एट दिस दिस इज 
एक सेकेंड दिस इज वन एग्रीगेट सप्लाई कर्व दैट इज डी दिस इज वन एग्रीगेट सप्लाई कर्व then you have another aggregate supply curve which is this aggregate supply curve that is a then you have another aggregate supply curve that is b which is this aggregate supply curve and then you have another aggregate supply curve that is c which is this this aggregate supply curve um this one these are four different aggregate supply curves that i have drawn with four different colors and then you have aggregate demand right so it says the government employs a deflationary fiscal policy that is it tries to contract or reduce or the aggregate demand in order to reduce the rate of inflation in its economy this shifts ad this shifts aggregate demand to ad2 in which with which as curve would this policy be least effective so iska answer of iska answer would be d why i'll tell you ye dekho ye raha aapka aggregate supply curve jo ke lras diya hua hai in option d ab aapki aggregate demand curve di hui hai before the full employment level has been reached such as ad1 and now your aggregate demand shifts to ad2 so basically although your national income is falling but is it reducing inflation no it's not reducing inflation so basically what they are saying is if you want to reduce inflation then you know aggregates lras agar if, if this would be the lras curve then this policy will not be effective so this policy to be effective which is the lras that should should actually be the answer the answer should be a why Although for this MCQ the correct answer is D, but if this MCQ is there, with which AS curve would this policy be effective? So the answer option A is there. Why? Because A is what is happening in A. In A, your LRAS is made. Is made, and then this is your AD1, and then this is your AD2. So if you look, this was the price level P1, and this is your P2. So the price follows. And if you look at this, look at this. This is your in in initial price level. P1 and AD2 is intersecting over here with the LRAS curve, and this is your price P2. So the price is actually falling.